The real power of collections rests in the methods that they have defined on them, and Scala defines a lot of methods on the collections that are part of it. If we look in the API and, for example, go to list, which is in Scala collection immutable, we can scroll through all the methods that are there. Now, you can go and read up on these. We're going to just hit a few of the major ones that you probably need uh, to know in order to, to make basic usage. We're definitely not going to cover everything that's in this full list because it's much too long of a list. So we'll start off, let's go ahead, and because I'm going to be using it a lot, I'm going to make an array called A, and all the methods that I'm talking about here will work just as well. They're defined equally well on both array and list. Okay, so we'll make an array that has several values inside of it. Looks like I put eight elements inside of there. What can we do with it? Well, there is a method called drop, which drops a certain number of elements. So when I call drop two, the first two go away. What if I want to drop instead of from the beginning, I want to drop from the end? Well, there is a drop right where I can drop the last two elements. If I only want the first element, that is called the head. If I want everything but the first element, that is called the tail. Those two methods are actually particularly well, uh, nicely used for lists, and we'll come back to that in just a bit when we talk about how to do uh, certain recursive functions on, on lists. You can also ask for just the last element. Now, of course, we could have gotten the last element. It turns that out that both the array and the list know their length. So I could have gotten the last element by doing that, but it's much easier just to say dot last. We'll pull back up the array A so that you can remember what's in it. Um, I'll actually go, instead of alphabetically, through some things based upon their complexity split at. So let's say I want to split at 3. Split at actually gives me back a tuple, it gives me back two arrays, where it splits on the index that I give it. So everything before that index, and this the first three elements, 0, 1, and 2, go into one array, and everything after it goes into the other. The companion for drop is called take. So if I wanted to get the first three elements, and just like drop has a drop right, there is a take right to get the last three elements out of our array. There are two other methods that I guess are a little bit more complex. One is slice. Slice takes two arguments, a beginning index and an ending index. So let's go from two to say five. Notice that I only got three values here. I got the thing at index 2, index 3, and index 4. I do not get the in thing at index 5. The second argument to slice is an exclusive bounds. It's actually very common in libraries that the first index is inclusive and the second index is exclusive. There's also a method called patch. So patch. Now one thing to note here, none of these affected A. All and in part because they work on lists, remember lists are immutable. No method can change the contents of, of a list because that would make it uh, not immutable. All of these methods, because they work on both arrays and lists, they actually give us back a completely new collection that, that was built. So patch takes an index that you want to begin patching at. It's basically going to replace some segment of your collection. So let's say I wanted to uh, replace the 5, 8, 2. Well, that starts at index 3. And then you give it an argument for what you want to replace it with. How about I replace it with 98, 99. And I, want, I said I wanted to replace 5, 8, 2, so I'm going to get rid of those three elements and replace them with just those two elements. Okay, so the 5, 8, and the 2 are gone, and they're replaced with 88, 99 patch because it is and it's flexible you can actually just use it to remove things you can use it to add things if this had been zero then I would just be adding stuff at a given index if this had been empty then I would have been simply removing three elements from index three so patch is a very handy method 
in that regard. There's also a few uh, methods that give you kind of set-like behavior. One of my favorites is diff. So I have A, and I want to diff it, and we're going to use a, a second array here. One, two, three, four. And what this does is it basically goes through and takes out every element from the original array that appears in this array. So our original array, let's remember, was this. Actually, it has one, two, three, and four. Just to show you that it doesn't have a problem with this, let's do a dot diff of array of seven, eight, nine. Of course, there are there. We have an eight and a nine. We do not have a seven though, and so the eight and the nine go away. But the fact that the seven wasn't there isn't a problem. If there had been duplicates, array one, one, two, two, three. Oops, one, comma one, two, comma two, three, comma three, dot diff array one, two, three. Oh, I need to be able to type FF of array one, two, three. It only takes out one of the ones, one of the twos, one of the threes. It takes out the, the first one that it comes across. So that's a, a handy method for, for getting the difference between two collections. There is also a method called distinct. So if I have an array, this won't work on our original one because everything was unique in it. Okay, I have lots of duplicates in there. If I call distinct on it, I get a collection that only has each element once and it is located at the first place that it would have been found. Uh, so each number occurs in the order in which they had occurred in the original collection. You can also do the intersection between these. So if I have, let's remember our original array A, and I can do A dot intersect of, just to make sure that you understand this is possible, I'm going to do, let's say, four, five, six, seven. And I used a list here instead of an array, it's just fine, it doesn't care. And we can pass any type of sequence here. And this intersection only has six, five, four because there was no seven in our original array. We can also do a union, in which case we'll get the contents of both. Like that. And in this case, it just appends them to to the end. So we actually do get duplicates. It's not like a, a standard set. Some other methods that are handy to use, and now these only work with certain types, for example, integers, are things like min and max. So a dot min, smallest element's one, a dot max, the largest element was nine. A dot sum gives us the sum of the elements. A dot product gives us the product of all the elements. A dot sorted will get us back a new collection, having them in sorted order. A dot MK string. This actually has uh, three different versions. So the default one just makes the string and sticks all the values together. A lot of times you don't want that though. For example, maybe I want them to have commas between them so that it looks a little bit nicer. Okay? I can do that by passing a single argument that is the delimiter that I want between them. I could also pass in three arguments. The first one is something to put before, so maybe I want to put these inside of brackets. Then I get my delimiter, and then I can put the string that I want after. Mm, had a bad feeling I was gonna mess that up. Oh, there we go. Didn't need two sets of parentheses. Okay, so that's MK string. The last two methods that I want to, to look at here are, in some ways, and maybe they're a little bit more complex, but they're remarkably useful in certain situations. One is called zip. And when you picture what zip does, think of a zipper. So I want to take my original array, and I want to zip it with another array. Actually, let's just do, how about we do this? A to Z. 
I'm going to use a range here. And what happens is it goes through, take the first number and combine it with an A. So we get back, instead of we had an array here, we had a range here, I get back a single array that has a bunch of tuples. So the first element is paired with the first element, the second element is paired with the second element, etc., etc. Notice that it stops when it gets to the end of either one. So whichever one of these was shorter, in this case array is shorter than A to Z, but I could also have done this, in which case A to C is shorter, so I only get the elements, the first three elements there. The other method is called zip with index. And that's really just doing a zip, but instead of having to provide another collection, it's using the indices of the values. So I get each value and its index in these tuples that go through. So that's a set, uh, that's kind of an overview of some of the methods that are provided, kind of simple methods. We're going to talk more about some of the more complex methods, what are called higher order methods, that provide you a whole lot of power as far as being able to do interesting things with your collections.